Welcome everyone. This is the 19th of May. It's documentation office hours. Topics I've got. Uh, Kevin's unavailability, pipeline steps ref, end of life notifications, early end of life. Anything else that needs to go on the list? Chris, did you want some something for Google Summer of Code? Yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, so let's put Google Summer of Code. Meg, anything you want to add to the list? Nope, I'm more listening than anything, so. Okay, great. All right, so let's go first topic then. Kevin Martin's unavailable until June 12. So Kevin has shared with the board, the Jenkins board, that he'll be unavailable until the 12th of June. Uh, so we're we're trying to decode what can we do to handle his absence as documentation officer. So one of the things we'll do is accept that we're going to delay this the work on this Java 11 to Java 17 transition. Uh, this is where we need to document how to install, make our default documentation install from Java 17 rather than from Java 11. It's a it's not time critical, but we wanted to get it started around the time that Debian 12 releases. Right now they've announced Debian 12 will release sometime in June. So I'm not overly worried by it. Do we have, do any, um, I've been out of it, but a couple of years ago, um, we had some guidance for performance for the various Java things to do, and it was sort of Java release specific. Are there any changes of that for 17, anything like that? or Not that we've that? detected the, in fact, we've heard, we've heard some anecdotes that hint that Java 17 in general behaves a little faster. Oh, without yeah. without a lot of custom tuning. I do, Chris, do you have any specific experience there? Uh, I've heard about it, but uh, personally, I don't I don't notice that that much of a difference. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, that that's me. I haven't seen a dramatic. That was difference. true for eleven over eight, but as I recall, our support people and what's the guy's name? God, I'm losing it. You know who I mean? He did those wonderful presentations at Forum. Mm, or, right. Right, and he but. There were different things you did to optimize or did or didn't do to optimize performance in 11 over eight. And I don't know if there's things like that. If we don't have anything like that written up, then we don't have to worry about updating. It. Yeah, I'm I'm not aware of anything. I know that CloudBees on their documentation site has some of those kinds of recommendations. But as far as I recall, we haven't put any of those on the Jenkins site. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So so now the next piece is there, there are certainly other things that Kevin does. For instance, he would regularly review the pull requests submitted to Jenkins.io. And what we're proposing there is, hey, until mid-June when he's back, let's invite others to assist. So Bruno Verachten has agreed to assist. Uh, he's based in Europe. Uh, Meg, I wanted to check with you. Would you be willing to assist with the idea being that what I'll do is when I see something I think you could help with a review on, I'll actually just go in and I'll assign the pull request to you if you're okay with that. That's fine. Will I get mail notification of that then? Let's test it and see. So what okay. I'm going to do is I'm going to assign this draft pull request to you. Okay. And let's see if you get email that tells you that it's been assigned. Okay. So there we see it. Now you can you can you can select here, do that, and you'll see only the the those that are assigned to you. This is a draft. You don't have to review it, but just for purposes okay. of a well, test. I can certainly. Let's see. We'll see that's a calendar. Where's my mailbox? I can tell. I have seen nothing yet. So you may have to adjust your notification settings on, on Jenkins.io. Jenkins okay. Yeah. I'll so there's this thing change. here, which is settings, and then email notifications. Oh no, that's not it. Uh, there's there's a setting that there's a thing that you adjust as a oh as for an what you want to be notified. Oh, here it is. It's in the unwatch thing here. Uh -huh. So top right hand corner under unwatch, I'm doing all activity. If you change it to participating and at mentions, it should 
that should assure you that you get notified. Okay. We'll figure it out. And it wouldn't kill me to go and look once in a while. Well, and, and if you'd like, if you're willing, I can certainly also just send you an email and say, hey, I've assigned this to you. So the, the crucial thing for me is, are you okay with me using this assignee as a way to, to indicate, hey, this is one for you? Absolutely. We'll work okay. it out. If I miss stuff, you can. Great. Okay. Yeah, so cool. agreed. All right. Super. Thank you. Mm. Chris, any objections from you? That that for me feels like it's a workable process for Meg to contribute. And yeah. I'll tend to assign you lightweight things, Meg. It's not, I'm not going to give you the monsters because that that just doesn't seem reasonable. Well, I don't, I mean, there was back in the day, sometimes I would do those that I was in no position to approve or anything, but I could go through and catch some of the stuff and highlight to you things to look at. Right. So that you could go through faster. So great. Um, whatever works for you. I always enjoy working with you. I always learn something. So thank you. Thanks very much. So I'll do the weekly change logs. That's not a not a big burden because most of it's automated. And for the upcoming long-term support release 2.401.1. I'll handle change log and upgrade guide as a way to be sure that I'm still able to do that confidently. Kevin's done the last four or five, maybe six or seven. And so I've gotten a little rusty. Ah, it's like riding a bicycle, you won't forget. Either. We hope so, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the release lead for Alex Alexander Brandis is release lead. And he's been patient with me in the past the set of changes doesn't look huge anything else on on kevin's absence nope okay next topic then was google summer of code chris what topics would you like there um so i the thing i would like to discuss about is like the documentation processes of the different projects because like um Right now, we don't have a centralized way to do things. So it's like different people adopt different kind of like technologies for keeping track of documentation. And we may want to make some recommendations about to do, what to use, what, what's available, that sort of things. Okay, so are you talking about documentations for plugins or documentation for Jenkins Core? Tell me more about which type of documentation are you referring to documentations for documentation for, for pipeline steps? Projects. projects. So it was like for how to keep track of the projects. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because like we we're talking about GSOC projects. That's that's why it's, it's about project management more so than Got like it. okay. New documentation this way. Yeah. Okay, good. So let's shall we talk through some alternatives? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so some alternatives and techniques we've used in the past. So one is Google Doc to, to maintain notes, maintain meeting notes, uh, blog posts for status reports. And so this was, let's call this the, the past techniques, flawed and imperfect as they were. Blog posts for status reports, meetups for, um, interactive sessions for demos and interactive question and answer yep. now one of the a recent technique that i've seen oh oh and and one more zoom recordings yeah to capture the meetings with notes and recording posted to community.jenkins.io. Okay. Now, one of the things that I, I think it may have been you, Chris, actually, that's doing it, or maybe it was Adrian or Bruno, but someone was using, instead of you, they were using Google Doc for meeting notes, but instead of using Zoom, they were using Google Meet. No, no, that's not us. You say that's not you, okay. So the, the benefit of this one was the recording is immediately available. Yeah. 
Uh, now, I, I, is it to all participants or to at least some? So it's 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 immediately available without upload to YouTube. Yep, but the downside is you don't have a copy on YouTube. Uh, correct. Yeah. That's and that that is YouTube is a is effectively an archival site for us on others. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing for the and whatever they call it, the initiation week or two that first bit? Do you have things planned for that or? We do. Community bonding is in progress. All right. And each group is meeting with each set of mentors are meeting with the contributor. And there is a, a checklist provided by the org admins that okay. we're using to be sure that we make sure we do the do the community bonding well. There's also a checklist on the project overall. Right. And then there's an overall checklist provided by the org admins. And that just came out, was it yesterday, Chris? Maybe today? I think it was yesterday. Yeah. So very recently. Yeah. And again, mentors use that to, to assure we stay on track, et cetera. So Chris did now that alternative technique stuff that may not be describing what you are most interested in, what, what other things were of interest to you or what other areas were of concern. Um, the other things I might be interested in is to use something like, um, I think I'm thinking it's like, I think we've used it in the past for some projects. Uh, so GitHub Wiki, that's oh. one. Also like, uh, may, maybe like, um, we can try like Trello or maybe get projects, depending on the like the availability of the resource. So it's like for projects, it may not be available for some people, for, for certain projects like Jenkins, so IO, rebuilding. So that's okay. Like, uh, yeah, that, that can get, that can like keep track of like different tasks more readily. Okay, and so, so Trello, Trello and GitHub projects are both quite good at task tracking, right? That's yeah. So in and in terms of that, couldn't we also consider using if we're talking about task tracking, we could also consider Jenkins Jira, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, okay. Basel Crow uses Jenkins Jira quite effectively with epics to capture the big picture then individual issues for smaller tasks yeah. right but but would the contributor have access to it yes yes okay yeah so so that one the use use their jenkins.io account okay yeah true now GitHub, we we absolutely are confident they've got a GitHub account. They should, I hope, have a Jenkins.io account. If they don't, it's easy for them to create one. Yeah. And just with GitHub, um, uh, somebody and Captain, who's very good, is actually because we have we are not using Jira for um, for the open source work, and we just have a label, a t an Epic label. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have documentation, and then he has sort of a form where you know describe the problem and what's the solution going to look like, and all this, and then, and then manually as you create the individual issues at the bottom, there's a list of issues that are tied to that. So there is a way to get that epic concept into GitHub too. You know, issues. Yeah, I'd never thought of that, but I thought it was quite clever, and it works nicely. Okay. How sophisticated yeah. are your people? Do you? What what I saw quickly last year, which was that all of us spent a lot of time individually trying to tell people why you didn't do like one PR to represent the summer. Um, you know, sure. the you know, the whole the small PRs. And you forget that bugged me at first too, because mm -hmm. I was used to thinking the big thing, you know. Um, 
And I realized it would have been much easier if we'd done that as a group, done initial training on this is how you do stuff rather than where you're constantly criticizing them and then they'd feel beleaguered and they'd go off and they'd try to do better. And it's like, okay, I'll only put eight weeks of work into this instead of the whole thing. Okay. Right. Right. Um, so the, uh, for me, I think that's, that's a uh, general advice, right? Right. Just open source practice and Yeah, th that's a question that Harsh, uh, the GitLab plugin modernization contributor asked, hey, do you prefer small pull requests or large? Uh, and that was an easy one, small, because it almost always benefits everybody when you do the work. It is real work to break a large idea into small pull requests, but that work is very, very useful to all of us. Right. And with that, I mean, I will maintain with docs, you can't always do that. If you're like moving a bunch of stuff around, it's really impossible with a bunch of little ones mm -hmm. because XREFs aren't going to resolve until you get everything put in. But So Chris, do you have, do you have one of these methods that, that is you, to which you are leaning heavily? Are you thinking, hey, I'm going to do it this way? I might try to adopt Jira this year because I was thinking about Trello, but it's like Jira is way better because it offers more features. Cool. Yeah. See, and I'm I'm prone to if I, if we need epics, I would bias towards using Jira just because it's it it's already familiar. I'm not mm -hmm. sure whether it's better or worse than anything else, but it's already familiar, and we've got the system. Okay. Good. All right. Great. Okay. Any other topics that you wanted to discuss related to Google Summer of Code, Chris? Nope. Okay. So the, the remaining topics actually are not especially crucial that we discuss them here. So we had a damaged page on Jenkins.io that is fixed, did some reverse, some, some bisecting to find out what broke it, and then wrote a test to assure that it stays fixed. And don't have time right now and probably won't for a month or two to, to decode why this thing broke. Just see that it did. And, and there is therefore a blocked change request that is failing tests and that's why it's blocked mm. okay. so this one right here will remain blocked because the tests will keep failing until we figure out why the tests what's really causing the, the thing to fail to do its job and at low risk there's no real harm it so long as this thing never passes the test and still doesn't deliver its content the site looks just fine And the steps reference that they get inside the dashboard is not affected by this, or it is not a so in when you say dashboard, you mean inside uh, Jenkins itself? Inside Jenkins, yeah, yeah, completely unaffected. All that this affected was this page, and it's working correctly now. So we go to pipeline, and if we look at pipeline steps, when I would search for checkout it will find this pipeline SCM step. I click that link. And in the broken case, this phrase nested choice of objects would be immediately followed by this thing. Oh. Having lost all of the intervening yeah. content between them. Interesting. Yeah, it, it changes the, the size of this file from when it's correct, correctly sized, it's 75 or more kilobytes. Uh -huh. When it's incorrectly sized, it's less than five kilobytes. Uh -huh. So it's easily tested. Yeah. And that that really is it. The other items, I've got a pull request pending to announce end of life for operating systems as we get close to their end of life mm -hmm. and proposal to do early end of life for Red Hat Linux 7. 
And that's that's really it. Any other topics for today's meeting? Nope. Nope. Okay, then let's call it done for today. And I've got a bunch of recordings to upload to get things mm -hmm. done. Thanks, everybody. And you don't have PRs sitting there that need me right now, right? I do not. Okay. I shall wait for your beckoning. All right. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Take Chris. Take care. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Thanks, Mark. Bye.